Hello everybody and welcome once again to Danny and Sons Real Tech Mod Pack. This episode I'd like to cover Rustic, well at least part of Rustic. I think it's going to be a bit big to cover everything. Let's have a look in the book first of all. It's got three different pairs, decoration, agriculture and production. Now what I'd like to do is maybe if I'm lucky we can do both decoration and agriculture. And these are the different things we've got uh, in decoration. So let's have a look at pots, for instance. So pots are decorative storage blocks, basically, that stores 27 items, which is the same as a single chest. So they can be different designs and colours, I think. So we have to do hold it in the mouse wheel and shift right click. Let's go and get some of those. So let's look at that first of all. The recipe's dead easy, and I'm not going to cover recipes because they're all in JEI, or at least I'm not going to cover too many. Here's one, for example. And let's, actually, I think I've got some, some more in here. So what we have to do is shift and scroll through these and then we should get some different designs. Let's have a look. Oh yes. So what's that one look like? <laughs> and you right click it, then you basically got an inventory. Let's take another one out of that, out of the right chest. That's next episode, I think. So what have we got next one? Grey, light colours. So we got all sorts of sort of designs for whatever that's got horses on it, isn't it? <laughs> so those are basically storage units. And the next one in the, in the selection of the storage units is the barrel. So we'll look at the book again, and the barrel is exactly the same as the other one. Uh, barrels, so barrels are decorative storage options. It can be 27 items, like a liquid, like a, a single chest. And you've got liquid barrels as well, which can store 16 buckets of liquids. Um, so that it holds liquids when they're broken, so that's good. And they're not gaseous, but at a certain temperature. When left in the rain, they will slowly fill with water, collected water. Actually, I have noticed that, because I've got one here with some water in it. It was basically that water just came from the rain. So let's have break these two, because they're in the way at the moment. So we don't need those for the time being. And I need a pickaxe to break those. They break, don't break too difficult fairly easily let's put those back in here now do they change back to the original one they do good when you break them now that's that one some of these items i haven't bothered building yet so maybe i do show some recipes when i'm doing it cabinets so they're a nicer looking alternative to chests so let's have a look how we actually haven't made any cabinets better go make some haven't we um so we've got three storage units plus liquid ones, of course. Now the recipes are fairly straightforward. Two um, two ingots of iron and all the rest of it. So let's have a look for cabinets. Let's start on here. So now cabinets. This is all the rustic stuff that we've got in here. And I'm not sure where a cabinet is. Here we go, a cabinet. So that's a trapdoor with planks. So we've got seven planks and the trapdoor will produce one cabinet. Now I'm wondering if that's the same as the um, the storage drawer. So what do we need? Trapdoors. I've got some trapdoors around somewhere because I made them. There's five here, for example. Oak trapdoors will do fine. So we just need some wood and I've probably got enough wood in here like this. So let's make a couple of these. So we've got two cabinets. Oak planks. So I guess we can then change the material that these are made out of. Let's try that. Let's go and get some iron wood. That's another one. I've got plenty of iron wood. So we just need two pieces of iron wood. And you'll find out why we've got plenty of iron wood later on. Because you need it for making some of these brews that we're going to be making. So let's turn that into that one. And then have a look at this one again with iron wood. So, yep, yeah, we can get an iron wood cabinet. We'll actually get one of those and get one of these as well. And we'll put those down, and I, I reckon that these are single item type storages, aren't they? If I read the whole book properly. Oh no, it's a. Oh well, she's not bad, is it? <laughs> and they go, and they double up. How about that then? So that's uh, another one. What else have we got on this? Ropes, chains, candles and chandeliers lanterns and lattice so let's have a look at rope ropes very easy it's basically three pieces of string in a vertical line and it looks like this i should replace all of these with these nice nice blocks shouldn't i rope so here's some chains here's some candles 
and here's a lantern here's a chalice and here's a chandeliering all prepared in advance How about that and some liquid barrels as well you seen the liquid barrels let's have a look at these now so the recipe for that one i go and look at it it's three pieces of string gives you 12 rope now rope's actually slightly odd at the way it behaves um we need some stakes too. I didn't pick those out of that chest today. Let's go and get those. So stakes you can be, pile up like this. What you do is you put them down, put something on top of it, and then you put the rope on onto this, like this. And then the first one gets used as a sort of a binding. You can do it straight onto other things like this, of course, but probably in the way. Uh, let's try it over here. And he just connects. It a bit looks a bit strange, but you can carry on connecting these up. I don't think those are going to match, <laughs> but you can put another one down, and that's how rope works. And rope is used in growing vines, so we'll cover we'll cover this in the in the agriculture section. So that's what you basically use rope for. You can also climb on it like that. When I'm already up on basically two blocks high, so that's quite a useful little. A little tip. I don't know whether the mobs can do that. It'd be interesting to find out, wouldn't it? Now chains are the same thing. So where have we got? Let's put some chains down. Let's break this stuff over here. I think. Don't think we need a tool for that. So what we can do with this? We've got lattice, iron lattice, and we can put a lattice down here like that, and it basically creates a an eye. A, a rope that goes out with its metal. And then you can put iron chains onto these, like this. Oops, I wanted it to go down. That looks a bit strange going across, doesn't it? But isn't. Can I get it to go down? Yes, I can. So it goes down, and then on top of that, bottom up, I've done it too low. Uh, you can put a chandelier or something else that hangs down. So we could put a chandelier on this one. I think I might not be able to do it. That's what, yeah, too low. Let's try it on this one here. <laughs> Just broke it off. Those are chandeliers. I'll show you what it looks like in a second. Let's pick this up. So that's how that's the mechanism anyway, so that's how it works. So inside here we have a chandelier. And on the chandelier I've just attached ca uh, candles. All you have to do to attach the candle is right click it. So for example, let's just knock one of these off. I've got to be a bit am I using the right one? Yes I am. And we take a candle, I've got five candles now, just right click this onto that, like that, and it just goes into that one position. You can't do any more, so you can do one per side, you can't do it inside, they've got to be on the outside. So that's your candles for you. And let's, let's get rid of this rope, so we don't need this rope, do we? Let's take the bit of breaking with an axe, which is actually the right tool for this. Good. Right, and here's the lantern. So you can see a lantern looks like this. So I shall be back in a few seconds when it's daytime. Right, hello again. And here's a gargoyle. That's what gargoyles look like. So we can have a look at that. I'm probably going to go right a bit here. Or is it going to go across and fall off? I've got two, one on each edge of this. So that's what they look like, gargoyles just a stone thing so it's quite easy to make I'm just going to get down from here I've got to be a bit careful doing this but it's not too difficult once you get the idea so those are gargoyles you can't see them very well from below but I think from above it looks they look better let's go up beside here and have a look at that one I you can see them sort of hiding in the corners there as gargoyles do so next thing they've got quite a few recipes for slate in this as well Let's remove these, we don't need those anymore, do we? And I'm going to have to find a different place to put those, because I put those back in this chest here, otherwise my inventory is going to get too full again, and I don't like that. Actually, I don't need this bag, let's just put the bag away. My bee bag. Um, so next thing on the list here is things like these blocks. We've got all of these bit rustic slate things. So a rustic slate is something you dig up in the overworld and then you can basically make chiseled slate by just putting four bits together like this. Actually, I need to be polished slate, do I? Yeah, let's put let's make this slate tile. So this is slate and then you shift click it and you get slate tile. Slate tile you can then make into 
slate bricks and slate bricks you can then make into chiseled slate like this also we'll put that down see what it looks like another decorative block really isn't it so break these off and I guess we can do with all the rest of the stuff with it as well we can make um, slabs steps uh, roof slab as you say was a roof yeah roof stairs oh yeah makes sense doesn't it slabs and roof slabs and that presumes the same thing but with bricks yes and then we come onto these here clay walls so we can make clay walls with one piece of clay and four planks so, and that's just another decorative block so I guess we just make buildings out of clay walls um, that was a clay block wasn't it got some of clay blocks out of here but let's put away these two because I don't need those two in the inventory at the moment so we can make some roof clay I think it was a block I'm not 100% sure to go after it gotten already now there we go so we got some clay walls like this and the uses of those is we can put some more around to make some cross clay walls or we can zigzag it across like that and that's that's it so let's put those down see what they look like together so you can imagine what that looks like with crosses in or whatever you want to do see it's like, it's up to you now. Do we need no tool for this one so we can break that with anything? Might be good if I use something a bit faster, but it uh, <laughs> doesn't tell me what's faster, does it? Oops. And then we can make chairs. So let's make let's make a chair and put it into our room. I think we can make chairs and tables and what do we got? So I think we can make an oak chair or something like this. Can we do that? No, I'm missing one piece of oak. Um, indeed I am. Let's go and get some more oak out of here. Wrong one. Two pieces, that'll do. That'll be 11, so we can make a, probably make a chair. Maybe we even make a table with that as well. So an oak chair, it looks like this. And we get four. And an oak table would be like this so we can get two oak tables let's go and put those down I don't know whether there's enough room in this now we'll do them out of here shall we otherwise it's I'm already my inventory is already completely full I presume you can stick them together like that yeah fantastic then you can put your chairs around here like this so those chairs I wonder which way I did it around they're going to face the wrong way Let's put them that way around. I'm not sure you can sit in it that one. But to sit in it, I think you just right click it like this. Let's press F5 and have a look what we look like sitting in this. <laughs> Bit crowded with that. F5 again. So there we are sitting on a rustic chair. Fantastic. Um, I wonder if I can sit on the other ones. And you press Shift to get off again like that. So let's go back and try on these chairs, which we actually do. Right click it. Yes, we're sitting at the table now but too near the table there we are <laughs> having our dinner right enough of that nonsense so I think that about covers most of the rustic decorative bits not quite we've still got the iron lattice to look at iron lattice is actually quite interesting let's go and get some leaves first of all now this doesn't work with forestry leaves this will work with minecraft leaves and, and you see it's autumn at the moment so but it doesn't matter actually rustic is also um compatible with uh, serene season so it does go the leaves do go dark when it happens so let's just trim a few of these leaves off a wrong one do not want to set them on fire do i, I want to trim them off here we go and i don't mind stripping this tree to be honest with you right we've got enough leaves now so what you do with this iron lattice stuff is you can put it down wherever you like like this um, and then you can decorate it so you can sort of make it into a wall so if we, let's put this down like this keep putting this on so we do now what's wrong with that one 
Get that out of the way. Like that. You can go up, of course, you can go up higher if you want to. Oops, missed. Try again. And then you can put leaves onto this. I'll just remove this one from the wrong place here. And as you see, they've become the right colour for the season as well. So you can decorate this and it makes a sort of an impregn impregnable wall for the mob so they can't get through it, but you can see them fairly easily. And presumably they can see you too, but I don't know. I haven't tested it out that far as it happens. So that's the, the iron lattice, and I think... Let's have a look at this book again. I need to get rid of some of my inventory, so I'll do that as well at the same time. Um, let's just put it into this pot over here, so let's just get rid of the, the barrels, the liquid barrels, chains, normal barrels, chandeliers, lattice, rope, stakes, I think that'll do for now, won't it? I'll have a look, quick look at the book, decorative books, so we've done gargles, tables, lattice, Lanterns, you've seen that one. Chandeliers, candles, chains, rope, everything there's done, I think. So we've covered decorate decoration in, in rustic. So let's have a look now at agriculture. Now, bees in rustic, we had, there are some hives around. I haven't seen a hive for a while. But if you look in the, here, they look very much like this. In fact, I do, I do know where one is. I could actually take you and show you. It looks just in a tree. They're fairly easy to spot anyway. And then also with the bee, you have the apri. Now the apri looks like, where well, I've got one. I think I've got one here. Now apries are an, another mechanism making things grow fast. See, I had one bee in here when I started yeah, yesterday and I've got six, 64 bees and 64 honey. I'm not sure if the bees themselves have got any uses. I don't think I see any uses for the bees. And the honeycomb. And when these things are, are breeding, let's take the, the honeycomb out like that, it'll actually make these plants here grow faster. Uh, and it's a four by four area. So, but the book in Rustic is actually really good. So let's have a look, bees. Bees can be found in beehives throughout the world and can be used to produce honeycomb. Beehives found in the trees underneath the leaves to get the bees just break the block fine and then it takes you on to related entries so we're not going to cover brewing today candles we've already covered actually candle recipe is candles are decorative light sources that can be placed on the sides of top of solid objects and blocks just like torches they look especially nice when placed on the sides of a chandelier ring well we've done that one already haven't we let's go back this one now that's bees it should actually I'm surprised it doesn't show me the apiary in here, but we'll have a look at that one. Fertile soil acts like vanilla farmland, but doesn't require any water to stay hydrated. It can be trampled, it can't be trampled, and sugar cane can grow on it without an adjacent water box. I've actually seen that already. And to make fertile soil, it's dead easy, and it's night time again. All you need for fertile soil is soil and bone meal, I think. That's one soil. Here's one bone mole, and then we get fertile soil from rustic. And as it says, you can place this down and put on it a um, sugar cane. Doesn't matter where you place it, let's put it down. Get that out of the way, I probably should put that away, probably shouldn't I? So we can make put sugar cane go on, go, grow on that without water beside it, and therefore you can have lots of sugar cane in your farm, which is great. And as it says, you can jump on it like crazy, it doesn't tramp, get trampled. That's a really good book, and I think it makes things grow a little bit faster as well, but it certainly will do around the apiary. Now, the reason I'm going to do flowers is because they're actually hard to find. If you look in here, in the book, you see these items in here, but you don't actually see a picture of the flowers or the trees. Well, you see a little sampling of the tree, but you don't actually see what the tree looks like when it's fully grown. So I come back in a few seconds when it's daytime. See in a second. Now, let's have a look in the book at the, at the agriculture. So we've done that, crop sticks. Now, crop sticks are wooden poles, which we've already seen. 
uh, can be used to support the growth of tall crops like chilli peppers and tomatoes. Crop stakes can be also have ropes tied to them, which we've already seen as well. So then you've got related then to tomatoes. So they're fruit of the tomato plant, which can be grown on crop stakes, as we know already. Tomatoes can be found in by breaking tall grass, which can be planted by interacting with a crop stick on the seeds in the hand. Seeds can only be planted on crop sticks above farmland or fertile soil. Tomato seeds will eventually grow into vines, which will grow eventually grow tomatoes. So they look like this. So we've got tomatoes, that's tomatoes, that's some farmland, and these are chilies. And the same for chilies, you basically do. You get the seeds, let's go and have a look at the seeds. I've got the seeds in this chest here, I think. So we've got some chilli pepper seeds and we've got some tomato seeds here. And we want those steaks, which I think I put away. Let's, but while I'm here, let's put this, these uh, leaf blocks away. I don't need those. I don't need the the other flower for that matter either. So I've got some stakes in here. I'll just take one, we'll just pull and plant it on this farmland over here, this fertile soil over here. So what you do is you break that, uh, put it on, put your stick down on top of that. It doesn't change the soil as you see. And then you can put one of the seeds on it like this. And you have to hit the bottom of the pole, right click on the bottom of the pole, and then it'll start to grow. And they can go up too high, so that'll eventually make some chilies so if we get up another one i only got one stick when they didn't i should have got two never mind so that so that's tomatoes and also chilies so they are the same so let's go back over here wild bris wild bris come from the wild bris bushes wild bushes can spawn naturally throughout the world in warm but not dry climates we find them in the plains for certain Wild bris can be harvested to fully grown bushes by interacting with the bush. Breaking the bush also works, and then the bush must be replaced. It's, there is another page about this. So let's go and get here are the wild bris here. And you can see these are ready for harvesting. Let's just right click it, take the harvest, break that one. Let's go and plant it. I think this will work. I'm not, again, I haven't tested this. I've only tested when it's been grown. So let's place it down there, and it's sort of grown already. Let's take some bone meal on it. What did I do with all that bone meal? Oh. I thought I self-crafted the bone meal. Maybe I dropped it somewhere. Get some more just in case. Don't want that one. I don't get rid of this flower as well, but no, I'm doing that now. So what you can do with this is bone meal it. And with one bone meal it grows, a second meal grows a second bush. So that's how you make these reproduce to get more bushes. And then you can harvest this like that. So let's have a carry on with the book now. Let's have a look at the next page. So wild bris. And it's got a second page of wild bris. So that's saying it cannot be produced now, but you can then basically do that. So you can eat the feed and normally gives you a quick growth effect. So here we've got grapes. Now grapes only grow on vines. Now vines, you have to put down the grape seed like this. And it'll grow into this, it says it's a grape seed, which actually then becomes a, a vine. And then on either side of the vine, it'll produce two grapes. There's one on that side, and then there should be another one on this side, but maybe that's, yeah, maybe this is in the way. As you can see, you normally get two, one on each side like that. Oops, try again. And then you can harvest the grapes. And of course you can eat them, I suppose, but uh, get rid of those. And the last one, two of it. Walking in the water doesn't help very much, does it? Like that. So you end up with, actually you end up more grapes than you start with. Now grape seeds are also found in gr tall grass, by breaking tall grass, I think. Let's have a look at the book. It'll tell me just in case I didn't know it. Yep, so it's farmland and fertile soil. So you break vines for grape seeds. Okay, that's probably how I've been getting them. I wasn't sure exactly, so there we are. And then you can be eaten, taken as half as long to eat as not. Okay, taking half as long to eat as normal food. So that means you eat them fast, is that right? I guess. Let's 
just eat that one. Oh no, I'm full. <laughs> I don't need to eat at the moment. But mainly I'm using them for making brews anyway. And uh, hopefully that'll be quite an interesting episode. Now the next one on the list is wild bridge, I think. Oh, olives and apple trees. Apple trees. So we got an apple. Let's get an apple. I've got an apple in here. Um, like that. Which you can get from anywhere, of course. Let's put that up here. Uh, to get the apple seed, all you need to do is to put that into a crushing table, tub, jump on it. That'll make some liquid. And also gives us a seed, which we can simply then go and plant. Like that. Tiny little seed. But it will grow into this tree here. And you end up with an apple tree and and eventually it gets apples on them and you can simply right click the apples to get them out of the tree like that and then of course you can do some more and that'll grow up for a while so i've got some more apples we can put those back in this chest over here and olives olives again you find it around the place this is an olive tree so if i harvest this olive tree um hopefully i'll get some more olive saplings and some olives so you see i've got six olives from harvesting that and two and two saplings and on this i've got luck three which basically increases your chance of saplings anyway so you can plant that down again that'll grow up again and produce an olive tree and this one this tall one over here is a ironwood sapling uh, an ironwood tree and we'll do the same thing for that as well. We'll break this one. And instead of getting olives, we'll get some ironwood berries, I hope. Oops. Oh, well, didn't do it good. <laughs> I was using the wrong... No, I was using the right tool, but I thought it was going to break these two. So we've got one ironberry sap, uh, which isn't very good. And no saplings. This is, oh, yes, I've got one sapling good. We'll plant it back again uh, and that'll grow up maybe there are more around actually so oh, there's another you normally get about between two to four oh let's look at that what did i get olive saplings normally you get two to four ironberries per tree and they're very useful other than being able to make iron out of them which is actually not very useful you can also turn them into an ironberry wine and this is my arm this is basically my field of ironberry trees here that I've got so basically when I want to harvest these I just harvest these trees but don't need to do that for now so let's go back and out and finish off I think I think we've covered most of the items in the book but except for herbs now the herbs are the interesting one olive trees and wood trees yes done that herbs now, herbs spawn naturally throughout the overworld and nether in a variety of different climates. Some herbs are edible and herbs can be used um, as ingredients or modifiers in alchemy. Once gathered, all herbs can be planted to the crop and regrown. So let's have a look at each one of these. I think I found all of them. So this one here is core root. In fact, they're done alphabetically. Let's just do them alphabetically as the book goes through. It's a shame it doesn't keep the page. So, aloe vera spawns in sandy biomes, savanna biomes, and mesa biomes. Deserts is where I've been finding mine, and that looks like this. This is aloe vera here. Little green plants. None of the plants are very bright. And compared to Ferdinand's flowers, they're all quite mellow. <laughs> Ferdinand's flowers are extreme. So let's go to the next one. Blood orchids spawn in jungle biomes, and chamomile spawns in plains, forests, and swamp biomes. So, blood orchids are these, and the reason I've been planting them, you can see these are blood orchids here. You, they will grow on farmland, or they will grow on dirt. Um, in fact, they'll grow on to that, but they won't grow on wood. Whereas coral root will grow on wood, for example. So that's the blood orchid, and chamomile is a white flower. And I think it's that's clouds buff, Kokosh. Where's it gone to? Ah, this one here. 
marshmallow root, blood orchid, ginseng roots. Ah, here we go, chamomile. So it's a white flower. Looks a bit like a daisy, I suppose. Um, and they again will grow on gro on dirt or on farmland, no problem whatsoever. So we'll look at the next one. Clouds buff spawns in mountain biomes and is edible and gives a levitation effect on consumption. So we could actually try that. That's happened. And kokosh spawns in forest biomes, which of course we've got quite a few of those around. Kokosh is as clouds buff. And kokosh is this one. Kokosh, I think, is pronounced. Let's just carry on for these before I finish that. Agriculture herbs. Core root spawns in caves and is edible. Death dot mushroom spawns in the nether. Ginseng spawns in the plains and forest biomes and is edible. So, now that was. Now we haven't done mooncat mushrooms yet. Which one we did? Death dot mushrooms are those ones. Um, winter saw that's over there. Ginseng is this one here and is edible. And the kokosh was, which was, oh yes, it was the, the levitation one, wasn't it? Clouds buff. What you do is you break the plants like that. And this time I got two. Let's put one that's down like this, and it'll grow into another plant. If you want to make that, if you want to have increased luck, I've got luck through fortune three on this pick here. If I hit this with the fortune three pick, I might well get more than two. In fact, I got four. No, yeah, I got I actually got five, didn't I? So it, it increases the yield of the plants with the fortune three, nearly always. Might be we eat this one, but if we're going to eat that, I need to get into my hand this. I would think. Have we got space? Have we got any food capacity yet? No, no, I can't do it. <laughs> Never mind, can't do that one. Probably a good idea. And then the last of these herbs. So I'll put that safely away now, don't need to worry about that one. So, marshmallow root, horsetail, that's right, we've done this one. Spawns in jungles, swamplands, plains and forests, almost everywhere. Marshmallow spawns in jungle biomes and swamp, oh does it, and swamp biomes, and it's edible. Mooncat mushroom spawns in jungle biomes and caves. And the last one, wind thistle spawns in plains, mountains and plains. So basically you find all of these things everywhere. Um, so, I think that's it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, next episode, what I'm really going to look at is brewing and elixirs, because they're very powerful. Both of them are very powerful. Um, especially brewing. Anyway, until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.